Ken Palmer worked in radio in Pampa, Texas and Albuquerque, New Mexico in the late 40s and early 50s, before coming to Denver in 1952 as head of the Intermountain Network's new Denver office. In 1954, when Denver's KFEL became KIMN, flagship station of the Intermountain Network, Palmer was regional sales manager for the network. He was there to help change the station's signage. In 1958, Palmer bought KYSN in Colorado Springs, and in 1960, he and his business partners bought KIMN. KYSN was soon sold, but for the next decade, Ken Palmer would lead KIMN. Uh, at one time, it had a 50 share, one in two uh, radio listeners on average at any point in time listening to KIMN. Because Ken did things big, he did them right. His idea on promotions was, let the other person start a promotion and then you do it twice as big and have uh, twice as easy to win. Tough competitor, I'll tell you that. He wanted to win. One example of Ken's competitive nature and promotional genius occurred in 1965. KBTR had a contest where it was real complicated. You know, you, you could uh, win a car for a year, you had to find the key behind the tree, and you know, it was real complicated, you know. So he said, well, we're going to put a stop to that. He went to a used car dealer in Lakewood, I believe, and he went up there and there's this young guy, it's his first job in, in, in auto sales, or he'd just gotten the job, and the guy says, can I help you, sir? And he said, yes, I'd like to buy some cars. And he said, okay, I have plenty of cars for you to choose from, what are you interested in? And Palmer said, I would like to take that first row right there, and by the way, I want that second row, and give me that third row while we're at it. So he bought 24 cars. The reason is so that we could go on the air and we could say, uh, we have a car to give, wait a minute, we have a couple of, you know what, we're going to give away a car an hour for 24 hours straight. Palmer also made sure KIMN embraced Beatlemania. Red Rocks was the one place in the United States that the Beatles did not sell out immediately. It took days. So the second year they came back to the United States, they skipped Denver. Palmer says, and I love this, if the Beatles aren't coming to Denver, then we'll take Denver to the Beatles. Here's your chance to win a free trip on Kim's Boss Beetle Liner to fly to St. Louis, Missouri, August 21st to see the Beatles in person. We flew to St. Louis, landed in St. Louis, got off, took a bus, went and got something to eat, got on a bus, went to Bush Stadium, sat there in the rain, and then they came on and you couldn't hear them at all. I'm on the phone saying, Hal, can you hear me? And he said, yeah, I can hear you, okay. I said, listen to this, and it was just pandemonium. After the concert, got onto the bus, went out to the airport, got on the plane, flew back to Denver, landed at 2.30 in the morning. It was the fastest turnaround imaginable. KB Tour was having a show on Labor Day, I think it was Labor Day weekend, at Lakeside. And it was Freddie Cannon, Dickie Lee, and Charlie Rich. Not, not the heaviest lineup, okay? He said, I want you to get the best act you can. We'll get the auditorium arena. He said, we're gonna, we're gonna put a stop to this. And I said, we're, can't, we can't get anybody two weeks from Labor Day. Everybody's booked. We go back and we make some calls to William Morris and stuff. You know, we're talking to the guy and he said, he's laughing at us. Are you kidding? There's no way. He said, oh, wait a minute. The Beach Boys have been canceled in Columbus, Ohio because of a fire in the, the and he said, would you be interested in, I said, are you kidding? This is about two hours after we'd had the meeting with Palmer. So we go back in, he said, have, well, have you done anything yet? I said, yeah, we got the Beach Boys. <laughs> he said, perfect. Ken Palmer was a legendary leader for a legendary radio station. He was a hyper, kind of energetic guy. And he had this smile on his face that you always looked at and said, what's he up to now? People knew there was always something fun, exciting, creative, new going on at that radio station. If it was happening now, if it was contemporary and relative to our audience, we were all over it. This is Batman. You're tuned to Denver's official bat station, K-I-M-N. And he also invested in the newsroom, which was very unusual for a top 40 station. When anything happened, he wanted people to tune into Kim to find out what it was. 
He was one of those few general managers that would listen. You could take an idea to him, but he never discouraged contribution from the staff. He was, and I, and I, would, uh, I would concur, perhaps the greatest uh, general manager and also part owner uh, of uh, any Denver radio station. In 1970, Palmer sold KIMN and a sister station in Portland for $6 million. KIMN was bought in 1960 for $400,000. Ken died in 1984. He was only 59. Signing off in 1988, 95 KIMN paid tribute to Ken Palmer in their final seconds on the air. 95 fabulous Ken, thank you Ken Palmer. For his outstanding contributions to radio broadcasting, the broadcast pioneers of Colorado are proud to honor Ken Palmer as a 2015 inductee to the BPC Hall of Fame.